All right. <laughs> so you did. You guys did good on. Oh, if you were out yesterday, we did a Google form too. So you'll need to do that on your own with your notes to help you. Um, you guys did well with identifying the layers and where things go. Hey, I don't know what you're working on, but you've been like hard at work. Now it's science. Easy at work. Thank you. All right. So we're just going to take another look. Sometimes the diagrams, I mean, it's always all the same layers, but sometimes the diagrams just look slightly different. So it's good to see a variety. So if we are looking here at the portion that includes the uppermost mantle and either the oceanic or the, the um, continental crust, what is that layer called? One of those spheres. It's the one that includes the crust and the upper mantle. The lithosphere, good. And you can see what the little bracket is trying to get you to see. It's these two brown layers here. They have already marked the asthenosphere. What important thing takes place in the asthenosphere? Convection current. Yes, sir. Convection currents. What are these three layers? You have the orange, the lighter orange, and then the yellow. What do we call that group? The mantle. The lighter mantle. mantle. And then what do we call these two gray ones? What is that? Core. Got the core. And then here's another way to look at it. This kind of looks like a um, dartboard in a way, like where you have the bullseye. And so this and this perfect sphere, that circular center, what is that going to be? Which one of our cores? Brandon? Inner core. Good. The inner core. And then what's the one on the that surrounds it? Outer core. Normal, but what are you guys doing? Yes, Zach. Outer core. Okay, the outer <laughs> core. So it's either looking at it here or here. And then um, as we're looking at um, this layer here, it's one of the spheres, but it doesn't have anything particularly special that goes with it. The mesosphere. And then finally, we have our crust. Whether Which one would this technically be? What type of crust? Brandon? Oceanic. Okay, and then what would this type of crust be? Good, the continental. Now, this is slightly off. Which layer is too big? Core. Core is too big, right? It should be more kind of like both of them should fit into this kind of space because it's the mantle that should be about 82%. And they always misrepresent that. The mantle always looks too small and the core too big. Um, don't know why. What was the important thing that went with the outer core? What is it? It has two special characteristics. Give me one. It gives our strength and magnetic field. Good. It gives the earth its magnetic field. Very good. What's the other one? It's the only one that is a true one of these. It is a true liquid. Okay. And why is it a true liquid? What makes it a liquid, Jonna? It's really hot. What is the core, the inner core made of? Or what is it? Is it a solid or a liquid? Solid. Okay. And then why is it a solid? And raise your hand. Good. So much pressure. Nice job. So that's kind of a recap of pretty much the majority of what we've talked about so far. Um, okay. So the furthest that we've been down inside our Earth is only about seven miles, which if you think about it, seven miles, that's pretty far like to drill down. But one. Still not very far in the whole general scheme of things for how thick the Earth actually is. So any ideas how we know all about these layers and like what's going on down there? We haven't been to the outer core. How do we know it's liquid? How do we know that it's made of that iron and cobalt um, and nickel that is causing our magnetic field? Any science. Okay. Very general. Science, for sure. Got it, though. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Well, they see, they're probably like x-rays at work. Like, okay. Like, I don't know what that How? would be. <laughs> All right. In a way, we kind of do. In a way. I like that thought. You're thinking like, yeah. they, they just like magically look. Like sonar? Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Good. So you guys are getting some, I know, you're getting some ideas. Kind of a combination of what Zach and Abby said. We have something that is called seismic data. Big okay. Mm -hmm. Seismic data. This is another vocab word. So seismic waves are going to provide that seismic data. 
and they are waves of energy caused by earthquakes within the lithosphere. So we said that the lithosphere is kind of like these hard, um, stiff, rigid um, plates. Like it's like the crust has kind of, when it cooled and hardened, it kind of cracked into these big chunks. These chunks are called plates. And again, we have a whole unit on it next. Um, but those plates um, are where the continent, or, or excuse me, where the crust, whether it's oceanic or whether it's continental, rest on those, those, those chunks of lithosphere, right? And so you can see in red, these are the cracks in the lithosphere. And so like <coughs> this continent is resting on this one. This continent is resting on this chunk. <coughs> Bless you. So the continents don't exactly match up with the, the plates. Sometimes they're kind of bigger. You can see almost like it looks like a real big outline of it, but it doesn't always have to be. Like Africa, you can see looks this plate looks, it's called the African plate. Um, the continent of Africa is on <coughs> that plate, all right? But the plate itself is the lithosphere, which is the upper hard, crunchy part of the mantle, and then the crust on top of it. Uh, I have a question. Okay. I'm going to learn about Pangea this year. Next year. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So, these seismic waves are when the plates, um, when there's movement, because that, the convection currents in the asthenosphere are right below the lithosphere. So, as they're moving, it causes those plates to move together, move apart, and that stress is what causes our earthquakes. And so if we didn't have that movement in the convection currents, then there'd be no stress being put on the cracks, the borders, the boundaries between those lithosphere plates, right? And so we can get a lot of information from these seismic waves or this energy that's created from the movement of the plates. Bless you. <clears throat> Obviously, unless it's a movie, we can't journey into the center of the Earth. And so instead, scientists are gonna gather um, observations at the surface to kind of reconstruct models of what Earth is like inside. Yes. This this subchapter remembers. Can we watch that movie? <laughs> It'll be one of our options for an end of year movie. We'll it journey really to awesome. the mysterious sign, mysterious island. Mm -hmm. Was that yeah. an option? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the um, analysis um, of this seismic data um, from that, they're able to infer. Again, is it one hundred percent? No, but it's a very good um, connection between what data they're seeing and then the, the results that they're, or the, the, basically the prediction that they're um, coming up with for what is going on inside the Earth. Um, if we didn't have the convection currents and the heat from the core, then a lot of what we see here could not be explained. So there has to be something going on um, beneath our surface. And so that's what we're going to kind of get into. All right. So seismic waves are going to travel through the earth with every earthquake. And a lot of earthquakes are very um, tame, right? They're, not every earthquake is even barely detectable, like for us just on the surface. There's lots of little rumblings that we don't feel or experience. Um, those can get de detected or picked up from seismographs. Um, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, but there's a lot of seismic data that is happening um, or being collected without us even really like knowing that something's going on beneath us. So there's two types, two types of seismic waves. We have our primary waves. And when you guys were cutting out your flashcards, um, I think maybe it was Shobi asked, why are they called the P waves? Why are they called the S waves? Well, P is standing for primary and S is standing for secondary. Okay, so Sometimes elementary school is called primary school, and high school is called secondary school. Obviously, you have to go to primary school before you go to secondary school. Kind of makes sense. Um, primary means first. Secondary has the word second in it. Yes? Is secondary school an option? No. Dang it. Okay. And there is a worldwide network of seismographs, um, and um, so the seismographs are gonna be the instruments that track earthquakes, seismometers are gonna be kind of what reads them, and it records 
when a P and S wave is detected, it records that, and then we'll talk about how they kind of translate or interpret that data that comes in. Because from that, they're able to detect where the earthquake originated from, um, how long it took for it to get there, so how far away was the earthquake from the station that's picking up that reading. And you're going to get readings from a lot of different stations for one um, seismic event or one earthquake. Okay. And so, the P waves, there's going to be some characteristics that you're going to need to know. Oh, um, let's see. How many do not lose track of time? All right. Um, the P waves are going to travel through <coughs> solids and liquids. That means they can go through every layer, right? Because those are basically our two options. And they can, that means that they can travel through the crust, the mantle, and the core, all right? They are going to be faster. Don't memorize this, think about it logically. If they get there first, if they reach the seismograph station first, they were faster. Okay, if somebody runs a six minute mile and somebody runs a seven minute mile, the person who ran the six minute mile got to the finish line first. That's the primary runner. The person who gets there second, let's say it took seven minutes, they got there second. It would be really fast, right? I mean, like they're like booking it. These are called compression waves. So compression is like a squish. Think of like compression shorts, right? If you wear compression shorts like under your jersey or something, it's to do what with your muscles? Compress them? Yeah, just like a wild guess. Just a wild guess. It'll squeeze and hold everything in. It gives your muscles, um, it keeps them kind of like um, more contained so that you have less chance of like pulling or straining something. And so we call that a compression, right? And so if you think of like that compression gear that you get, like with Under Armour, Nike, they have a lot of it. Right? And you, when you put it on, it like squish, pulls everything in, right? And so we get these compression waves. And so the way that they work is they compress and then they kind of expand and then they compress and they expand. And that's how the wave travels, right? And they have to go through a medium. When I hear the word medium, I always think of kind of like art. You have different mediums for art, right? You could use like charcoal, you could paint. You could do pencil. Um, so you have a lot of different, you know, it good. what? It tastes good. Oh my gosh. Let's, let's just stay I focused here. Come. No random thoughts today. Mm -hmm. um, so they ha true. just like you have to have a medium or material that you're using for art, you have to have a medium that these waves travel through. And in this case, it's the crust, the mantle, and the core. And they're going to move horizontally back and forth by squeezing and stretching, squeezing, stretching um, as they spread apart. In a way, it's kind of like a slinky. Okay, so if my hand is the start of the earthquake, and then, um, or this hand is the start of the earthquake, this hand would be where like it reaches the surface at the seismograph station and it's gonna send, it's gonna be able to pick up that P wave energy. So I send it, and you can see where it bunches together, right? It squeezes where it gets real bunchy and then it spreads apart. This is pretty much like how a P wave will travel through Earth's layers. Okay? And so these are the characteristics that you're definitely going to need to be um, aware of that go with the P waves. All right. The other kind of wave are the S waves, and they travel through solids only. So S waves, solids, they both start with S. The other thing is that they get stopped at liquids. So which layer are they not going to be able to travel through? They go through most of them except for which one? The outer core. The outer core. So they're going to be going through the, the crust, 
the asthenosphere, lithosphere, and then mesosphere, once they hit that outer core though, they get stopped. So think of the letter S. S waves only through solids stopped at liquids. Yes. Isn't the, all, all the magma like just very viscous liquid? It is very, very, very thick. We're actually going to watch some videos that show it's like that thick, very viscous is a great word, um, which is a word that we'll actually have next year as one of our vocab terms. Thick, gooey, hot. Yes. Honey? Yes. Very, yeah, it's that, 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 so like the honey is a liquid, right? But it's very thick. And so the magma is even thicker than that. That's why it's not considered a true liquid, Zach and Aiden. We're talking to him about science. Okay, but you guys have been talking a lot, and I'm glad that you're on science, but make sure you're listening. Um, so that means that the S waves are going to be able to travel through the crust and the mantle, but as soon as they hit that outer core, they get stopped. Okay, S for stopped at liquids in the outer core. And slower. So all of those, there's a lot of S words that are associated with the S waves. So they're slower. They get stopped at liquid and they only go through solids. All right, so sometimes if you can kind of put those things together, then it's not something that you're trying to memorize. And again, if they get there second to the P waves, they're slower. Again, you don't need to memorize that. You just need to think about it logically. Okay. These are called transverse waves, which are kind of like ocean waves up and down. You know how um, if you watch a wave, thank you, it looks like an ocean wave kind of is moving up and down and up and down. Um, to me, they kind of look like the letter S tipped over on its side, right? Because if you have the e an S, that's kind of like the shape of the S waves. <laughs> it's like a letter S on its side. And they also have to travel through a medium, in this case, the crust and mantle. And again, think of an ocean wave. So if we take our slinky, a slinky moves like this normally, right? I can make it, if I could like stand it up and make this happen, it'd be cool. Can't defy gravity. So I'm gonna do it on the side. This would be more like an S wave. And as you're doing it, like I can see there's an S, oop, there's the S again, right? It has that up and down, up and down to it. Okay, and so I'm putting you guys all in a hypnotic state. I can see it. Weed stairs. So this is the S wave, which is a transverse wave, kind of like the ocean wave. If I would show you this, you'd be thinking, okay, compression wave, P wave. And it does seem like this should be faster, right? Because it's a more direct route. The S wave has to go up and down and up and down, right? Think of a winding road versus a straight road. It can go, you can go a lot faster on that straight road. Yes. We need to get stairs in here for the slinky. Oh, uh, well, sorry. I don't think that I can get that to happen. I am stairs. Okay. Um, let's stop there. Have some videos that I want to show you. And 